Now I request Mr. Ramesh Nair, CEO of Balco, to present keynote address. Mr. Ramesh Nair is the Chief Executive Officer and whole time director of Bharat Aluminium Company, Balco. He has over 24 years of experience in the metal industry and has previously worked with the group of a period of 12 years in various functions like smelter operations, asset business, commercial and marketing, and assumed the overall leadership role at Sterlite Copper as its chief operating officer in 2008. I request you all to give a big round of applause to Mr. Nair. Dignities on the dais, uh, Mr. Pani Silvam, Mr. Tarvinder Bazin, uh, Mr. Hariharan, Mr. Madia, Mr. Nanda, and uh, all friends of industry in the audience. Uh, I should thank Mr. Madia Metalysis to have invited me for this uh, particular function. And I think it's very well organized, and uh, I'm sure you, I wish you a lot of success in future, with this being the maiden uh, event. Uh, like we say in Vedanta, and all, I, all of you always say that India is a country of tremendous potential. And with the huge reserves of raw material for non-ferrous industry, I think we are a country which is poised for growth. Huge reserves of coal, bauxite, iron ore. And, and even gas and whatnot. And still, as a country, we are <coughs> clearly lagging behind the various nations of the, country, of the world, like Canada or Australia, in terms of exploiting these reserves and getting the best out of these reserves that the country has to create wealth and to create employment in the uh, country. We are also a country having a huge wealth of human resources and a very highly qualified technical population. And this obviously is going to be a challenge and it's an opportunity both. An opportunity because we have the technical resources with us, we have people to work for us, we have the kind of institutes, we are training our youngsters. But obviously if you don't give them employment, they become, uh, you know, they become more difficult to handle. So it's like a, a positive and negative, this kind of population that we have of youth that the country is going to have. Which I think our uh, visionary Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Bhai Modi ji has always talked about it. I listened to him in one forum in Indore, where is the Madhya Pradesh Global Investor Summit, where he has clearly mentioned this. There's a huge population of youth that the country is his asset. And it's a time, this Make India campaign is, a, is, is the opportunity to sort of employ these youngsters and to get the employment to much higher levels in the country and use our uh, resources to the fullest extent. Uh, under the leadership of the new government, obviously there are a lot of uh, actions that have been taken. The new bills on insurance code and MMD, MMDR, the Make in India push, the disinvestment kick has started. The infrastructure focus is on and there is a focus of, on ease of doing business. And obviously the current environment of low inflation because of sudden easing of oil prices and easing of commodity prices has actually given more headroom for lower interest rates. The most heartening thing for all of us is that India should be the fastest growing nation in 2015 at an expected rate of around 7.5%, where China is expected to grow to close to 7%. Obviously, this has its positives and its uh, negatives, because when China slows down, there is a pressure on commodity market and the non-ferrous uh, industry. But at the same time, it also shows that India is paused for better growth, the per capita income of India in non-ferrous metals, the consumption, for example, is a one-tenth of China and even as maybe one-sixth or one-seventh of the global average, which obviously gives us in most of the metals, for example, in, even in steel. So this fundamentally is a big opportunity for us. And the non-ferrous industry has to really steer up for this. The primary producers are expanding very rapidly. For example, aluminum, the overall production of aluminum in the next couple of years should touch to, to an excess of more than three and a half to four million tons in, in this country alone. If Vedanta, Hindalco, Nalco all put together, I don't know if my number is right, uh, broadly. And uh, are we geared on the downstream side to handle this kind of uh, primary metal? Uh, I think that's, that's, that's a challenge we have both in copper and aluminum, probably in zinc also. That is a, is a downstream actually marking up to the growth of the primary stream. And which is an opportunity and a challenge for the country. And uh, there are a lot of government priorities that is good, that is, that can push this growth up. For example, the housing for all by 2022, 
which is about 60 million houses in urban and rural houses, smart cities, a US dollar 1.2 trillion investment on building urban infrastructure, power for all by 2019, which will obviously give uh, focus on uh, energy efficiency, smart grids, and uh, the Digital India Initiative, which is to transform India into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy, and the vision of construction of around 30 kilometers of highway per day, and development of high-speed rail and waterways. So the vision is there, the initiatives are on. Uh, as industry, we have to also mark up, otherwise you'll have an influx of imports coming into the country, because as the government speeds up on the infrastructure in various sectors, if the downstream does not mark up, then the, like what we say, the primary, primary metal gets exported and the, and, the, and the downstream metal starts coming in. And today that is a big challenge for the non ferrous with the Chinese influx of Chinese metal and in various forms. It started a couple of years back as a primary imports, but today I see in most of the industry, like I've worked in even steel, stainless steel, I've seen the biggest challenge today is the influx of uh, imports coming into from China, especially in terms of value-added products, which is actually uh, which, which is a big burden of the uh, economy in India at this point of time, and also for us, all of us. So, as Mr. Tarvinder Singh said, we generally should we have some expectations from the present government. Aluminium, uh, we have a lot of uh, growth that's happening in aluminium, but obviously. We have to have to have to have have to promote high value additions in India, and then so that we we go into more and more make in India concept. The inward duty, Mr. Tarvinder Singh said, is very very important. The inward duty structure should be corrected. Uh, GST should be implemented. The government has moved forward. I think the bill is getting introduced. So obviously that is a very positive, which should actually uh, push the uh, economy. And under the Make in India campaign and along with the st state governments should promote more and more industrial parks closer to the primary metal production because all of you understand with the GST regime coming in, more and more aluminium parks very closer to the aluminium or any metal for that matter uh, would help each one of you sitting in this room and also the industry as a whole. So uh, broadly I am very happy to Mr. Madia to have organized this. It's, it's the right time to focus on non-ferrous industry. And uh, as primary metal producers, we are with you. Uh, I have my uh, head of marketing, Senior Vice President Mr. Puneet, also here for interaction. And uh, we can really uh, work out a mutually beneficial relationship. Thank you.